Yeah. Call this meeting to order. Pledge of Allegiance is first. All right. Presentations. I'd assume this is you, Max, yep. for the Odell Wives. So at, my last, at the last meeting, uh, I mentioned that Odell Wives is required to do a public hearing because they were accepted for the Community Development Block Grants Economic Development Program. Uh, this meeting is just a standard requirement where we will hold a public hearing. It's been in news, Lincoln County News for the last two weeks, and this is just the point where we hear any comments from the public, and if there are any concerns, they're voiced now, and then the select board will motion and go through some of the documents that I sent out last week uh, for what I prepared up to this meeting. And I can go through those documents if people would like, or if we can get to the public hearing portion of it. Do you want us to open up a public hearing? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Would somebody like to make that motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? All right, Max. All right. So for those who are not aware, what Audio Wives has what the town applied for on Audio Wives behalf was the community development block grant for ninety thousand uh, dollars. This fund, these funds will be used to purchase some equipment, inventory, and be used for general capital project or general working capital that Audio Wives will use for their facility. And they've actually given an updated budget for what they anticipate the funds will be used for. Uh, the entire ninety thousand from this. Community Development Block Grant, they anticipate will be going towards equipment. And their matching funds of $45,000 is anticipated to be broken between inventory and working capital. And if any changes are made to that, they will need to come back to the uh, town's ad hoc committee to make that request, and we'd have to approve that. And in exchange for getting the $90,000, Audio Wives has to create at least three full-time equivalent positions, and they've actually been starting that hiring process since April, because that's when they did their environmental review and were allowed to start that process. And they're already on a very good track, I'd say. So at this point, the town just needs to go through the documents, the public hearing, and once that's done, they can start requesting a drawdown of the 90,000 from the state. And the documents that I'll need the select board to sign tonight are actually more documents about the town's uh, standard of contact, conduct um, because this comes from the uh, Housing and Urban Development Fund. So it's more about how we comply with ADA issues and that we're saying that none of the funds are going to use to displace an individual, which is going to be very difficult to do because I don't see how Audio Life getting some equipment and some um, product is going to get someone kicked out of their home but we are making that signs uh, statement. And that's all I really have, unless there's some questions from members of the select board or from the public. Is there any questions from the public? <clears throat> Is there any questions from the select board? I, I just the one regarding the ADA compliance that they require us <coughs> to testify or certify. Mm -hmm. um, can't do the number of forms that are involved in this application. That's why I wanted to get permission to do that. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, but one of the things we're supposed to certify is that the town is ADA compliant. And I I think we can safely do that. Um, I just wondered whether there are any, these are town buildings, right, we're talking about. We're not talking about other buildings in town, only municipally owned buildings. Right. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. And I do note that I think the only one that the town officially owns that doesn't follow the ADA compliance is Friendship School. But I note that in one of the papers that the second floor, the one that the second floor, which can only be accessed by a stairwell, is only used for storage and it's not used for general access anyway. So, yeah. And it's a building that was made before the standards were ever created. Yep. Any other questions? 
Thanks, Chris. Uh, somebody make a motion to close the public hearing. I move that we close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? So what I really need is just a motion from the select board to uh, proceed with the fee development block grant plans after the meeting, sign the documents that I have. Is there a motion to do that? I move that we uh, proceed with the uh, community development block grant for IOS. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? signature after meeting. Yep. Zero setbacks. Is there any adjustments to the agenda? I'll look at you, Bob, but... <laughs> no? Okay. <clears throat> Citizens' comments. Does anybody have any comments? Yes, not. Anybody online? Max? Um, no, I don't see anyone. Okay. Uh, slug board comments. Bob? Well, I know Jan has more to say about this, but I just want to um, acknowledge the passing of Ted Worcester this last week. Um, he was a very active member of the community, and he'll, he will be missed. A um, couple other comments. Uh, someone uh, emailed me or texted me about a company called iSolar. I've never heard about them before. Have, have you? They've been knocking door to door on doors Jefferson doors Street or Elm being Street. Aggressive. Yeah, I did. I did Google them. I got a LinkedIn a connection or a link regarding them. It's a brand. Uh, there were no specific projects or solar projects mentioned on the link that I saw. So I would just ask people to really be careful about listening to people who come to their doors and knock and put pressure on them to sign up for ISO. Um, a reminder that the library has sent out a call for artists for its uh, coming fundraiser, Great Art for Great Reads. And this is a call for artists, and I would hope that if there are artists in town who would like to participate in that event, that they fill in the application and uh, proceed. It's, it's gonna be a good fundraiser for the library. Um, and then I do look forward to our intersection discussion this evening. I know Vicki Bell and Lindsay Weber are here to talk about that. I'm sure there are others as well. So that's all I have to say, thank you. Colonel, I don't really have anything. Jean? Uh, well, a few. I have a few things. Uh, one is a uh, happy birthday to our town manager. Thank you. Today. It's always nice to start with something nice. Uh, another nice thing, I was at the uh, Lincoln County Regional Planning Commission meeting the other night, and it was right in this room, and I would like to say that Waldenboro won the gold medal for that meeting. I stayed just for a few minutes afterwards, a little network and chatting, because some people I knew. And the comments that I got were, what a wonderful town manager we have. <laughs> Towards Max, how well organized and how... Technologically advanced. <laughs> yes, and the room itself. It goes along with all the technology where we could have a, a meeting. It was being it was being YouTube. People could talk to us online. They were the and there were a number of towns from Lincoln uh, County who were here, and they they were all rather impressed with Waldenboro. It was really nice to be a part of that and to to hear that. The other that Bob mentioned that Waldenboro did uh, lose an icon last Friday. Ted Worcester, who was the owner and pharmacist of Clark's Drugstore downtown for many, many years, his father before him, and I think his grandfather before him was a pharmacist, not here, but he was a third generation pharmacist. Um, he was a 12 year member of the select board and I sat at the table with him. He was a, a personal friend, he was a community leader. He was a personal friend because he lived in the village and those of us who lived downtown who are all of a similar age, used to hang out together and just do things. Um, there were a group of young people down there also who hung out together, including the Worcester children. My four, all four of my children's first job was at Clark's Drugstore and under Ted's tutelage, and it just made me comfortable that I knew that someone was watching over them and even teaching them how to sweep a floor. They wouldn't listen to me, but they did listen to Ted. 
Um, and for 12 consecutive years, I had, there was a Minzy child working in that drugstore. It was, it was a good thing for, for my family. Um, we'll miss Ted. He, even towards the end of his life, he wanted to know what was going on in town. He would call regularly, and he was very funny when he called. He'd have a few questions. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> but he wanted to keep in touch with people and what was going on in his town. There's a wonderful um, obituary online. It's really well written and and an interesting read. It was it just tells about his life, but. Uh, I'm sure Betsy and her sister did it, but it was really well done and nice, and it gives you a, a nice feeling about Ted. So if you get an opportunity, um, be sure to read that. Uh, as you know, we opened up the Quarry Hill Blueberry Fields to harvesting a couple weeks ago, and I just want to say we've got a lot of positive feedback from residents. Uh, saw a lot of families up there, kids, and they're happy that we have that resource. Cool. All right, open along. Town Manager's Report. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, I had a meeting this week with Mid Coast Conservancy um, with their water quality manager, and we had a, a great meeting, and he informed me of a couple of things. They're working on setting up their own lab so we could do maybe lab testing at some point down the road. Um, he offered some volunteer services for when we are doing water monitoring Apparently, he's already been out on the river with Glenn, which he said was quite the experience. Um, but it worked. It, I think that's a great partnership that we have. Um, it started with Madomic Valley Land Trust, and then when Mid Coast Conservancy took over, um, you know, they're going to be more active and with us, and I think that's a, a good thing. Also, big news, big news at the transfer station. Um, on starting this Saturday, we will be opening to the public at 8.30 instead of 10 o'clock. So it'll be 8.30 to 3.45 on Saturdays. Um, we put that out on Facebook and we got several comments that would be nice to have one day a week, also, one day also during the week that it could be opened earlier for people wanting to stop in as they go to work. So I will bring that up uh, with John Daigle, but that's just something that people have been asking for and we were able to accomplish. I just have one thing. Um, I, my first exposure to Ted was, uh, he called me on my first day to welcome me. And then I would say once every few months we would, I call them Ted talks. <laughs> Ted would talk and I would listen. <laughs> and it was good uh, because he knew Waldeboro. And he would give me a lot of insight uh, from somebody from away. He thought it would be good for me to have some history behind things that had happened prior to my arrival. And I found that extremely helpful. Um, and I think part of it was so that I didn't have to keep reinventing the wheel or something would, uh, he would watch these meetings and, and something would come up and, and Jan, you, 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 you did him perfectly this is what you need to know. Okay. Goodbye. And it was, it was short and sweet, but there were some Ted talks and some of my favorite ones were he would bring me subway and then we would go down to Riverside park and sit at a table and have a conversation. And I found those meetings, especially when I first came here to be very helpful. And so those are my fond memories of, of Ted Wooster. So that's all I have. Okay. <clears throat> On to the consent calendar. Somebody like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar. I move that we approve the consent calendar. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? No correspondence or anything yet? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. On to new, new business. Main Street, Jefferson Street, and Friendship Street intersection. <laughs> Would that fall into you? <laughs> it, I guess it will. So there was, I got two emails last week from two residents expressing concern about the intersection. And as we all know, this is ongoing concerns that we've had. Um, so I did some research um, prior to my time um, about what had transpired. And it would appear that at some point in 2013, there was some serious conversation during the downtown plan 
about making some improvements to the downtown area the next time Main Street was paved. Um, and if you'll recall, they put the new curbing in, the sidewalks, um, and that discussion began in 2013. And from what I can glean from that, and any of you who were on the select board or involved can, can add to this potentially, um, the town planner then met with a member of the DOT staff and they talked about a couple of traffic calming measures. And one was a, uh, a four-way stop or a blinking light. Um, and the four-way stop was pretty much from the notes that I could see shot down right away because of the, the, tr the topography of the area um, with trucks stopping in the winter to make the left-hand turn um, and also um, trucks coming up the hill and then having to make a right-hand turn. So that seemed to be a, a resounding no um, from what I could glean from that conversation. They did have some conversations about, um, um, sure, speed bumps. And that's not something that the DOT was likely to do either. But one of the things that was a possibility was um, narrowing of the lanes to, to get, get a visual of it would appear that you were it was a smaller area so people would naturally slow down when they got to that smaller area. Um, so those were some of the, the measures that were discussed. And then I'm gonna say those discussions went on from 2013 to 2016. And then um, in 2018, it was brought up again um, that there were issues there. And again, we reached out to the DOT and Again, um, the four-way stop was mentioned at the time, and I think Katie was the, actually the one, Katie Witchenbatch, select board member, brought up that. And again, I went to the DOT, and that was a resounding no. Um, so in my conversations last week with the DOT, um, I asked about flashing lights on at least the stop signs. Um, so I... I got a response of, well, we'll have to take a look at that. So what I was hoping you would do tonight after listening to the public, and I'm sure you will have no problem doing this, is requesting of me writing to the state um, to ask them to come and actually look at that intersection. And one of the things that came up was I was given data by the DOT and it doesn't mesh with, with what is on um, their website. So I was told this year there were five accidents, but yet when I run a report even off their website, I'm seeing um, a let French, the intersection of Friendship Road, Jefferson and Main Street, total crashes 11 um, with three injuries. Um, so... There's, I don't know if they're doing what their dates are or how they determine that, but those numbers that are off of their website also match what our police department provided me. Um, and if you'll recall, and the reason I brought up the flashing lights, I know um, back in 2017, we had a list of the most dangerous intersections. And Kaler's Corner still, um, the Kaler's Corner has more accidents than Maine and Friendship and Jefferson. But since those lights were installed at Old Augusta Road, because remember we have Manktown was number one, and then Manktown and Union Road, and then Old Augusta Road and 220. Old Augusta Road, since those lights have been installed, they're not, that number has dropped. And what the lights I'm talking about is um, there's flashing lights saying that the stop sign's coming up, and they also, I think, on the one side have flashing lights on the stop signs. So um, that was interesting as I was going back and doing the research. So in 2021, we've had 11 so far. Um, in 2020, there was nine incidents with two injuries. And 
in 19, nine crashes, two injuries, nothing reported in 18 or 17. Um, but again, Kaler's corner, there was. And one of the interesting things too about Kaler's corner is, and this was before my time, was they did change that hill slightly. Didn't they cut the hill down? Slightly. They were talking about it, but I don't. Know. I don't think they have. Did they not do it? Okay. I don't think they have a change that. No, um, I was told that they did make the hill a little less. I thought that's that was my impression. And Maxie said it. I'm pretty sure. I I was under the impression that something was done there, and there was some rearrangement. But even now, like I pulled up there today, even at Kaler's Corner, if you look to the right, if you're going towards Bremen. There's a telephone pole right in your line of sight, so you kind of have to pull out. Um, I did have conversations um, with all of our emergency services, too, um, and John Daigle. Um, and from their perspective is some of it is, so from our EMS director's perspective is some of it is just people who are from away and they don't seem to see the signs. Um, so maybe lights might address that. but. Again, I'm not a traffic engineer. And some of it is just people's speed that exists, and it's not just speed on Main Street or Friendship or Jefferson, it's speed all over town. Um, you know, and we can put a police officer there and people slow down, and then when the police officer's gone, they start again. Um, and some of it is the site, and that's one of the things um, when this John had um, the line striping company come down um, and I know you, we had talked about this in 2018 was originally if you'll recall those spaces so if you're heading towards friendship and you're on Jefferson Street and you're stopped when you look to the left we had a ban on SUV parking there if you'll recall um, so that might help having that outlined but again when we were going through with the um, crosswalk and the parking spaces with the company, we have to conform to what the state would like. So we're going to have to, we're going to lose some sp parking spaces. That in itself may help those site triangles. But again, that's something we can have the um, state uh, DOT look at. But that's pretty much where we're at. Um, if you had to rate it now, Kaler's Corner would still be number one, um, and the Mank Town, and then I believe it would be, believe it or not, Augusta's probably, Old Augusta Road's probably dropped down to four, and Main Street would be number three. But the metrics for that and how the state evaluates that, I can't speak to. Um, but I think if we write a letter and ask them to come to a meeting, um, and that way they can hear the concerns from the select board, from the public, and also, um, you know, they can bring their data and explain it to us. Um, I intend to share these reports from our department um, with them too, just so that they're aware of what's um, what we're seeing versus maybe what are considered reportable accidents to them. So that's a brief history that I could find prior to me and what we've done after. Um, and again, all three of those roads are state roads. So we can request, we don't really control, unfortunately, that. And just one thing on the speeding, and John and I, um, Chief Lash and I talked about this last week is, like I said, when you put a police officer out there, it, you know, people slow down. You put the speed sign out the first day, people slow down. After that, it's people become benign to it. And one of the things, um, a couple of the studies that have been done is if you see somebody and you know them, actually telling them that they were speeding, hey, I saw you the other day, and you probably didn't realize it, but you were speeding in front of my house has more impact than having either somebody sitting there um, or one of the speed signs. And, and I, I think that's, we have to say something. Um, 
because I I've noticed a lot of times um, I see people I know and I'm thinking they're speeding. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you do say something to them um, because it is, it's, it's hard to see. And I, I know when I pull up to that intersection, I tend to roll my windows down so I can also not only have the visual, but I can have the, the hearing portion just to help a little bit. So. Does anybody get anything? There was a short time when um, there, that parking, lot, parking spot was eliminated. There was a time when it was it said no SUVs. That was, and, then, and then they paved over it. And well, there was a short time when no one parked there. Mm -hmm. And I live there. I can see that intersection out of my window. It's fun in the winter time. And I know why the four-way stops can be dangerous. And actually, a lot of people, I know, out-of-state cars use that as a four-way stop. I saw that yesterday. A guy from New York pulled out of Friendship Road right in front of a car coming down, right in front of it. And the woman, <laughs> she goes, to get it. And the guy just assumed he stopped, figured it was his turn, and went. Um, but anyway, the visibility is terrible if all the parking places on Main Street are filled there. It, it's impossible to see without getting in the middle of the road. That's really, that's da I find that really dangerous. It doesn't happen all the time because the parking spots aren't always filled. But there was a short time when there wasn't one right at the, the first one right by the corner was eliminated. And that really was, I like that because then I could look up Main Street and see if there were any cars coming without having to get into the road. But then. And I can't imagine if you're in a lower vehicle. Oh yeah. It, it must short. be difficult. <laughs> yeah. That too. You can't Is that the spot in front of the lawyer's yeah. building? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Which is right next to your door to you. Right, and the lawyer, I mean, obviously no one's there, and they have parking behind the building, too, as do we. Okay. Trucks would park there when it said no SUV, so a pickup truck would. <laughs> and if you <laughs> get a tall one. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> but um, I actually parked a couple spots up in front of the Waldo because I realized I have a higher vehicle mm -hmm. when I was going in. Actually, it was last week and saw so you and somebody when I came out, they said, you know, you can park closer. And I said, well, technically then people can't see over my vehicle. <laughs> so it's just, that's, that is a, it is a site issue. So that was also John Daigle's view is that a lot of these are site triangle issues and he is working with um, the DOT and with the striping contractor to address those. But, um, and I should say, John would have been here tonight, but he is on vacation. So um, he could not make it this evening. Is anybody else? Paul? <clears throat> it is a dangerous intersection. I'm, I don't like crossing from Jefferson to Friendship, and I don't like crossing from Friendship to Jefferson. Because when you try to see up the hill crossing from Friendship to Jefferson, either the um, the wind, what do you call it, that pillar on the side of your vehicle between your front, your, your passenger oh, side thing, yeah. window and the driver's side, on the, on the passenger side, on the passenger side, the pillar uh, between the, the windshield and the passenger side window obstructs your view. So you have to be really careful. And then crossing from Jefferson to Friendship is difficult because of that curve. And because people come up that hill lickety split. They, it'll just almost, you think it's clear, and all of a sudden you're halfway across and someone's roaring up the hill. I question whether or not the state has control over the uphill side to Friendship and Jefferson. I don't think they own that. I think that belongs to the town. That and is for, 220. Sorry? 220. That is 220. Now 220 starts at Moody's, comes down, and it turns mm -hmm. left at Friendship. It doesn't go beyond Friendship or Jefferson. You mean the it stops up, at that intersection. But it doesn't I think go old, down the hill to but the I river. think old Route One is that's state. Old Route One. Yeah. But and that's still that. in that's that state. possession. Though. That's state. That's still state. It's still state, Bob. I thought we. I thought we took. No, they pave it. It's state. It's okay. State. That argument goes out the window. Then. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say, at least we can do what the heck we even, want. Even Jefferson Street yeah. is, is state road, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. yeah. The blinking stop signs at Old Augusta and 220 helped. It really lot. did. I mean, it helps me. 
it gives me the warning that that intersection is coming up. I can't see a downside to putting at least so, a blinking stop sign. So when there. I said that, that would be $2,000 a stop sign, and the state told me that it's not in their budget. So. Oh, I, Let's but I think point. that but I think that's worth the conversation. They're gonna to have to approve that. So I think we have to have that conversation with them and to get them to the table. Um, it, like I said, my intent was have this meeting tonight, hear what the public has to say. That way in the letter I can say I can lay it out nicely for them and could you please come look at this and could you come to after you've done your um visit could you then appear at a select board meeting yeah well I, I, that would be my intent lindsey webb is here tonight and i her daughter was involved in that most recent accident oh, my daughter's car was t-boned um, at that accident and we actually own two of the accidents um, that happened to our family um, in that intersection um, one of them was my fiance was in 2000 and i believe it was either 18 or 19 he was crossing the intersection there was somebody parked at Philip Cohen's um, in a pickup truck. He looked to the left and looked to the right um, to see the clear visibility. There was another truck that was coming down the hill from uh, Main Street, was traveling at a higher speed than 25 miles an hour, um, wasn't from the area, was from Ellsworth. And my fiance was almost all the way through the intersection and got clipped on the back end of his pick on his car. So it fit, hit the, the gentleman that technically hit him. Um, we were told at that time it didn't matter what the speed was. My fiance had entered the intersection. It was a stop sign. And even though it spun his car around and he landed into the pole at the drugstore, we were at fault for the accident. So that totaled that vehicle. And last Monday, my daughter was traveling northbound on her way to work at 8.30 in the morning. She had her cousin in the car with her, and they were driving a 2011 Ford Focus. The driver that was the oncoming from Jefferson Street blew through the intersection, never stopped, never slowed down, and my daughter was going 20 miles an hour because she's a very aware of this intersection. We've lived on Friendship Road for 13 years. I've lived in this town over 20 years. Um, my grandparents are from here, great-grandparents are from here very familiar with the roads um and i have always said to her the most accidents happen a mile from your home we live 0.9 of a mile from that intersection okay this is the second car that as my daughter's coming up the hill this gentleman from new york never slowed down never stopped he was driving faster than 25 miles an hour he hit my daughter's car it made a full rotation and a half in the road and she was headed back south down over the hill my daughter is 18 years old and she is scared to death to get into a car right now she has bruises from the top of her shoulder all the way down she was her arm was pinned between her her car seat and the door and the door was pushed in and the bottom part of her door was pushed so hard that it pushed it up into the back side of her car that's not a 25 mile an hour accident. And it was written up as a 25 mile an hour accident. <laughs> My daughter is, um, just the simple fact that there are a lot of visibility issues in Waldeboro. There's a lot of speed issues in Waldeboro. Main Street is a problem. It's not necessarily always coming northbound up over Main Street, normally it's southbound. You know, if you're coming off Main Street, but there's also a lot of um, issues when you're coming down the hill that when you go to make a left-hand turn onto Friendship Road from Main Street, if that road is not clear or if there's any type of slick in the road, your car will slide. Any type of vehicle that's smaller. There's an issue coming off Friendship Road onto, um, if you're trying to make, if you're on Friendship Road and you're trying to make a left-hand turn and the drugstore is on your left-hand side, there are spaces there that vehicles have been parking, which limits visibility for oncoming traffic to the left or to the right. And to my knowledge, there's not even a parking space there. But they, we were told by Detective Fuller that that space 
was allowed to park there for deliveries for UPS and such for the drugstore deliveries and Main Street, which because it was to keep it off from Friendship Road, but you have a lot, you have no visibility. And when you make that, like when you're saying, when you're coming north on Main, you go to make that right-hand turn, sometimes you don't see people if they're standing there go to, Correct. to cross. I, I just wanted to point out that there's also a pedestrian issue there too. There's a huge pedestrian issue. If the if there had been a child in that intersection when my daughter was hit, they would be dead. If it was not for the if there was anybody in that intersection when my car my daughter's car slid or another car that was in that intersection, there is nowhere for her to go. There was nowhere for her to pull off. There's no visibility. The oncoming traffic up Jefferson Street, it was completely clear. There was no cars in his visibility lane. And we were, he was a distracted driver. So my suggestion, I mean, is to paint something in the road several feet away from the sign, you know, stop sign saying, stop ahead. Oncoming traffic doesn't stop. If it's in the road and they're looking down and they're distracted or they're on their phones, chances are if somebody's written something in the road, you're going to see it sooner. The crosswalk that used to be there that was from the, it was when they had the old, um, by the Bowie Pizza Shop, there used to be a crosswalk there. And I don't know if it's still painted. I haven't paid attention to it. That so, would indicate a little bit more. Yeah, the down. state and Fort, well, there's. Part of the issue is too is some of those crosswalks had to be removed because they're mid-block crosswalks, and the state frowns upon the mid-block crosswalk. So, um, it's Dan or Scott. Yeah. I. Good point. Mm -hmm. the, Whole other town. How they handle their stuff. I'm not. I'm interrupting. Sorry. Well, no, I, I, I can't. Mm. I would agree, but I don't know. I'm assuming that's also the state. That that it's must a be a state road. One. Yeah, wow. the so state road. Yeah. Again, I don't know, but that's part of why we had to remove and not repaint some of those was because the proximity to the corner when you're turning, um, it was one of those issues. There are so many blind spots in those four corners that there is no way and you have you're up against the weather you're up against traffic that's not from the area that's not aware if you are if you are standing at the taxion old taxion building which is now bug tussle annex or what, whatever it's called if you're standing there and there and you look straight ahead it looks like the road is like you could just go forever it doesn't look like there's a stop there they do have the sidewalk painted or whatever it is on the, you know, to crosswalks, but the visibility, there's too much visibility in some places and it doesn't look like, it, like you're going to stop anywhere. And I think that was the intent when um, the downtown plan was discussed was to, to somehow visually narrow that whole area so that it looked much narrower and that makes people slow down. Even painting the white lines on the roads, you know, the very clearly marks making the marks much clearer. And I think part of that, if you look at how they striped Maine when they paved it recently, um, we got a lot of complaints that the, the travel lanes were a little narrower. And I think maybe that was something, again, we'll have to talk to the DOT about that. Was that intentionally done to try to slow people down? But it's still... Uh, it, you're right. And speed, like I said, it's not just on Main Street, it's all over town. And, um, you know, John with uh, Chief Lash and I have had that conversation and we would love to have, you know, a dedicated person, uh, traffic control person. Um, but we haven't had full, we haven't been at full complement now for a while, so... The, the other problem that's an issue is that they may not be reporting accidents or there may not be important accidents that happen there. But I work for the Maine Antique Digest and on a daily basis we hear squealing of tires and close calls. Close, close calls that aren't being reported at and the you're not gonna re Right. They're not gonna report a close call. 
No. But and and that intersection every single day, and you have EMT drivers that are trying to get through that intersection. They can't see because they're blocked to go up over the hill. They're slowing down. They're still having a hard time to get through that intersection, and we see it on a daily basis. It's and you hear it, and it's dangerous. And like I said, you know, when I pulled the state, it said 11, which matches what our number says. But yet when I talked to them on the phone, I was told there was only five. And I was like, I don't know if that's right. I know that's what I was told, but. They can certainly give me a call because I have images of my daughter's accident as well as my fiance's accident that happened. And they were, the amount of damage that was done to both of their vehicles in a 25 mile an hour zone would make you sick to your stomach especially if you were somebody that was near that intersection. Mm -hmm. oh, it is, is a motion in order? Well, uh, I think what people wanted to chat oh, more. Like to... uh, yeah, I'm a person from away who didn't see that stop sign, and I told my car in that intersection um, last October. So I was... Uh, 36 at the time, still am, had been driving since I was 16, never been in an accident at all, like at fault or not. So, um, I, you know, I maybe arguably was distracted, but I think just it's really, for whatever reason, it did not register to me that there was going to be a stop sign, and then I saw it too late, but couldn't stop before the intersection. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to add that. I think it's super dangerous. And now I live on Friendship Road, and it's terrifying, like, and I have to drive through that intersection yeah. anytime. So can, can we just have your name, because we're going to have yeah. to put you in the minutes. Uh, Sarah Rich. Anything, Vicki? Yes. Yeah, um, well, you know, I, I emailed you because of Monday's accident. The cafe was closed, but I was there waiting for a delivery. You know, there was nobody parked there. And that noise is just horrible. And it's like the fifth one I've run out to, and it's just like, you know, I don't know CPR. So I'm running out with my phone, all I could do is 911. It's a horrible noise. Um, as far as speeding, I, I, my husband's not here, so I'll say it. My husband got a ticket in Thomaston. Now, every time we drive through Thomaston town, slow down. So it's not a matter of having the police there. Give the tickets out. Yes. Give yeah. a lot yes. of them. But but I will say, because John and I, uh, Chief Lash and I also had that discussion, the notion that we don't, we do, we do hand out, they do hand out tickets. Okay. But we also do have, and, and everybody has to realize too, we're not at full complement. I understand and that as well. So part of the problem is, like I said, we'd love to have a dedicated officer. Part of the problem is we have not been at full complement for we 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 had we were at full complement for a six month period in the last three years. We try desperately to hire new officers. And I get it. The and, academy is behind, and well, we do get it. But the really academy is behind, but helps. but part of our issue too is just getting people interested in wanting. To and it's not just in Waldeboro, it's all over Maine. And, and that was something that we talked about at that meeting Jan had referenced was, you know, we can put more funding into it through the American Rescue Plan, but we literally, there's $30,000 bonuses being offered by other towns in Maine uh, and I, I they're not being it. hired. But And part of the other issue is too, we are an exceptionally busy town as far as calls go. Um, you know, our daily calls there's a lot. So even if we had to on, um, it, we might not always be able to do it, but they do write tickets. Okay. Um, and I think because sometimes people don't see them being written or you might not notice it, but they do. And we see it from the other end because I'm the one getting the phone calls about them writing tickets. I, I get it. All the things you could be worried about. And I'm like, but you don't understand this is something that's important to our residents is the speed issues. So, um, so no, I, I get it. When you get more for us, write the tickets because it helps. Look, oh, it does. Every time it we does. Get Thomas Dent, it's 25, just like Walter Bar. It is. Slow down. You're going to get it a is. ticket. They make a difference. And part of our issue, too, is, and, I, and people don't realize, is that 
we're so large in our mileage. Um, I mean, town spread out. The town is so spread out. So, you know, in the morning, miles of road. Yeah, hundred yeah. exactly. Oh, you must have looked at our website. One hundred and ten miles of road. It is, and you know, when you compare that to what Damariscotta has to deal with, or um, even Thomaston, you know, I am always careful because they're always like right there. Um, but it is. It's again, if you see somebody who's speeding, it really does work to say, hey, maybe you didn't realize you were going so fast, but you are. And I do think the visual cues, thanks for sharing, but maybe if there had been a flashing yellow. Yeah, I think it's if you're traveling and, you're, and you've been on, like, so as someone not from Maine, if you're on Route 1, everyone is like up your rear end because you, uh, Route 1 is scary to go that fast if you're not used to it. Um, and so you're trying to focus on like not holding people up really because um, people do speed around here and if you don't know the roads it is intimidating and then it's just like I was not expecting a stop because there had been no stops and so it's just I think it's hard to make that transition like I didn't understand where I was I didn't know that I was in a town like it was it happened very fast so yeah Vicky? okay besides the tickets um, the stop sign in front of Sproul Block I don't know why it's not at the edge by the street. I don't know. I'll like, ask. You can't really see it. And I think the same thing for our friendship side. Like, the stop sign's not by the street. Like, there's a whole sidewalk between where the stop sign is. So, and I understand there's a stop sign in front of the drugstore, too. But also, even if you just put a slow, put the slow on the street and with a rumble strip, maybe, not a bump, not anything, but just a little like, hey, slow down on the, the main highway. But also, yeah, solar lights or something on this stop sign, or they have those stop signs where there's like an arm out that you can just attach an arm that says something. But the, just moving them towards the street where you could see Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I know they, I was told that they enlarged them when they redid all the paving and the sidewalks. I think they're attached more so though to a pole. They're not attached to like a stop pole. They're attached to, I believe, like the sidewalk, some kind of pole, but it's not, it's not close enough. I will, I will ask that question. The one in the sprout block is, is not anywhere near the road. No. It, it's, you don't see it as soon as you should. You have to get closer. Well, you to might not see it at all because then line. there's another sign next to that. Mm -hmm. yeah next to the stop sign and then you're looking at the building at that point so it's it's so when you come into the head you're looking ahead but it doesn't there's there's nothing to kind of keep you in that lane for for markers as far as on either side you've got all these parking spaces and you've got all this stuff going on and nothing really indicates that it's a hard stop anywhere i i mean i know when i was walking you know, crossing that even in the morning, because I'd start, I'd go to a friend's house on Friendship and walk up, and, you know, we were crossing, and I, I mean, you, I would say Jan and Abden, you both live on Jefferson. Do, do you see the speeding and the... Oh, constantly. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's Jeff, only... Jefferson Street's crazy. Is it's it? like a freaking highway. <laughs> it is. It's horrible. And it's not right. cars. It's it's work trucks too. Yeah. Big asphalt right. trucks doing like eighty down the hill just all day long. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my name is Tom Rubin, and I, I agree with uh, everything that's I been said tonight. Name. I like a lot of the ideas about marks in the road because there's two type of people that go through there. There's out of towners who don't know the intersection, mm -hmm. and it's a frightful intersection. I remember when I first came to that intersection, I couldn't tell who the priority was. It almost looked like it should be a four-way stop because all the roads are busy, there's clutter everywhere, there's buildings on the road, and they're equal width. I think Main Street is basically equal width to Jefferson mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm and friendship. So you get there and you think, do I stop? And don't you wish everyone on Main Street would stop? So, but it's a frightful thing. So if you're out of town, you're figuring it out for the first time, you really don't know what to make, make of it. But then there's an in-town problem. The speeding is just 
all over town. It's frightful. There was this kid. I hear him speeding all over town. He'll, I live across from Cider Hill Farm, so it's high there. I can hear this person driving all over town speeding. He's never pulled over. How do I know? Because he does it day after day. So I called today, and I had uh, Chief Flash on the phone. It was very helpful. He told me the 110 miles. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm really impressed. Because I was comparing it with Dan Riscotta and Thomas did. When you go in those towns, if you speed, you will get a ticket, and you know you will, and you don't speed. Simple as that. But it, like he said, they're down two officers, and it isn't even the money. They just can't. They don't have the staff. So I like the things about putting things in the street, the stop signs, more obvious. Rumples are a great idea coming down that hill to wake people up. But the speeding, just, and your idea of telling people. It I, I hate to say it, but you almost have to embarrass them, you know, and, and, and um, we actually did a campaign um, in a t my prior life um, of tell your neighbor he's speeding. I mean, we, our police officers would, you know, they'd go out and then there would be, you know, some calmness and we did warnings and then even gave some people tickets and filled a room with people who got tickets and they yelled at us and it became, it but it, it was kind of a campaign of, um, you know. I was crossing Jefferson the other day and I checked the truck uh, coming from Friendship had stopped pickup truck. I got out in the crosswalk and he pulled into the intersection. I looked at him, he looked at me, and it was apparent that it was a good thing we were looking at each other because he didn't intend on stopping. And he went through and then he leaned out the window and told me I should look where I was going. I, this, this I will hold the police to. I called and said I was threatened in that intersection. You were not threatened. We'll have a 5,000 pound truck approach you and someone say something to you on the road and tell me you're not threatened. It, it, there's a disregard for driving in town that I think can be, for the in-town people to, be, to behave better in that intersection can be improved. And even if we take the police and there's 110 miles, maybe give them two days, once a month, and rotate it so you don't know when they're really on an intersection and give tickets so that you do tell your neighbors, your friends, you know who's speeding too. You gotta watch out for that intersection. You will get a ticket there. If it's random and tickets are given, it will help for the in-towners. Anybody else? Can I just oh. make one more observation. The traffic on Friendship Road, where I've lived now for what, 15 years or 16 years, has increased. It's a lot more, there's a lot more traffic on that road than there used to be. I don't know why. But maybe, the, maybe it's because during COVID, a lot of people have decided to live here instead of all year long, instead of just part of the year. But it, it's intense, it's fast. Um, it's taught me to slow down because I would drive too fast on that road, via culpa. Um, but it would be helpful to try to do something, and maybe a motion is in order now. The motion would sure. be yeah. to authorize our town manager to write a letter to DOT to request a meeting with their traffic control people to discuss the issue of the Jefferson Street. Friendship Street and Main Street intersection. Is there a second? Second. Would you Any like that discussion? to be similar to the Augusta Road meeting we had? Well, I think it's important. At the Augusta Road meeting, we were at the site, mm -hmm. and I didn't see any residents at that meeting. All I saw was select board folks. I think it's important for DOT to hear what these people have said. Okay. I really do. I. It's better than. So I'll, I'll tell them to do their review, and I can give them the contact information. If you leave me all your contact information, that would be wonderful. And, and the only other thing that I had to add is that there are 
signs that do indicate what the speed is, but there are areas where those signs are covered by trees that are around so that you can't really see what the speed limit is. Um, and I think on the one on Jefferson Street, I think it's right before your house, Jan, isn't it on the right-hand side? That's 35 mile an hour, I think it is, 20 or 25 mile an hour sign. But there are not a lot of speed limit signs that are on the main drag or on Jefferson Street. Even on Friendship Road, I live directly next to, to Ralph Hoff's old house. I'm actually the abutment for Sylvania's property as well. Um, so <laughs> they pick up the speed there. When I'm pulling out of my driveway, it's, I think it picks up to 45 miles an hour beyond okay, my no, house, yeah. mm -hmm. beyond my house, but they're already going before. They're already they're, gone. They're going 50 by the time they hit Sylvania. They're already Park. gone. So yeah. there are many times when I have almost been rear-ended to pull into my own driveway, which is a tight bottleneck, but it comes out to a shape like this. So I have to slow down. And they don't want to. And they don't want to. Yeah. So and I, my walking partner was sort of diagonal to you. And just even parking where I had to park, sometimes it was like taking or backing out her driveway was yeah. like, or even coming out of her driveway was taking my life into my own hands and then walking there. If the state determines it requires too much money, then uh, what the town wants to do, do they prevent the town from taxpayers raising the money to do improvements that the town wants to do? I think we, I, I think that we'll, we will be giving them a compelling argument again. And, and I mean, like I don't think, I, I think if, if we, if they give us a list of what they'll do and they, but then the argument is it's too much money, I think we can. Those sound grooves are a great idea going down that to just. But just bear in mind that's also a residential area, and that you uh, might we might get pushback <laughs> from true. people who live there yeah. about I don't want to hear that all day yeah. and all rumble night strips. long rumble strips because that's they true. do carry. So I think we'll need to to think about that. Um, and also I don't know how it affects the plowing, but mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example. You know, if you when you're almost so you're coming out of t you're going south. You're coming out of town, you go down the hill and you come up. If you go to turn onto Pine Street left, there was a tree hanging down. I fought with this tree branch, these tree branches for quite a while. People were complaining that some of the times they couldn't see a car coming north on Main to turn onto Pine Street and they'd be almost turning because literally the branches were hanging down so low in the roadway. And it took us a good three months to get those <laughs> trimmed. Um, but I think so those you're right when you say that there's stuff hanging in over the signs and things and i can i can also include all of those things but i will write the letter i will sign it and off we go this is hot board getting any more comments and i can also include the minutes from this meeting with yeah. it and did we get a second to that? yes mm -hmm. i believe we did you yes. did yeah. i, I, I just so. add we're, we're not trying to put dot on the spot here i mean i know you've got a great relationship with them so it's going to be a an informative, friendly meeting, not... No, it won't be. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, I just have a quick question. Is it, what about a hanging four-way flashing light? Is that feasible there? Yellow on Main Street and red flashing, Jefferson Friendship? Maybe. That got to be a discussion for the meeting yeah. we have with mm -hmm. them. Yeah, because they're the only one that's going to be able to answer that. Yeah, I just think that would be good visibility. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, moving on. The MMA annual election. There's kind of a moot point. It's only, there is no real choices, but I didn't want to make the um, uh, assumption that, that's, that you would vote for all of them, but I'm assuming that you will. Um, for vice president, it was Elaine Alos of, uh, she's a select board member, chair of the select board of the town of Salon. And if I'm saying that Solon. wrong, okay, Solon. thank yeah. you. I knew I'd be corrected. <laughs> <laughs> and executive committee members, David Sire. Sear. Okay, Sear. Town of Frenchville, Melissa Doan, yep. town of Bradley. Yep. And Justin Poyer, um, Shabig Island. He's a new one. Okay. The other two, the other three, have been on the committee for a while. But they're 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 running unopposed. Yeah. I just wanted approval to send our votes in. 
I, I move that we authorize our town manager to sign the ballot on behalf of the select board after it votes tonight to elect all three votes, no, no, four nominees. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? We're all set then. The Sylvania task, the Sylvania possible Sylvania committee. Yeah. We discussed this the last meeting. Um, has anyone talked to the Sylvania task force about their participation in this or potential or what they possibly see? I think I had about four members saying that they would be interested in joining in. Um, I don't know what I, off the top of my head, I don't know what that ratio is. Bob probably knows like the total number of the actual it's committee. A, about, about a third. About, about a third, yeah. So I don't know if you want to just create a committee and then those four can join on. I don't know if you want to just. I think that would be the best something. way to do it. I mean, because you're going to have members from the task force on it. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I don't think we've come up with a Aren't you glad you came? You fixed nope. the intersection and we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the deal. <laughs> too much information to get signed up for committees. I'm probably the only last remaining person that has family that was here originally when the ta when Sylvania property, the gentleman's agreement was made with Sylvania property. So it's unfortunately been in our family for a long time. So I do. Well, I think you should be on the committee. <laughs> like I said, we come up with the number look, first, Bob. <laughs> let's fix the intersection, Bob. <laughs> We've got uh, your name, though. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so if we had if we had nine people on the committee, um, and we had talked about having folks from some committees that already exist, mm -hmm. like EDC uh, planning. Uh, it's conservation, recreation. I don't know if there are any other committees that might have an interest in that property per se. I would almost just have a, a let the net cast, see what interest there is first, apply. and let the we'll we'll tell the committees and say, hey, this is happening. If you want to do it, go ahead and just include your experience, including being on put an application in for it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to do it. We, I think we got to come up with a number, but I think the task force should take precedence because they've they know exactly the ins and outs of that property yeah. yep. thoroughly. So. so the idea then would be to just to advertise that we have positions open yep. Yep. on a Sylvania committee. Yep. Wouldn't yep. hurt to announce it at the EDC meeting or conservation commission meeting. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think we need a committee and figure out what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. All right. Yeah, we need some other people too that are on committees because fresh ideas mm -hmm. would be mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. yep. 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 So, is that what you want to go with, Bob? Is a recommendation of nine on this board? Initially, pending expressions of interest from okay. people on committees and the public. We don't really need a motion for that, do we? Yes, we gotta, we're gonna create a meeting. You've got to create, create one. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, would you like to make a motion, Bob? To create the committee and uh, just determine the numbers based on applications and expressions of interest. Yep. What's the name of the committee? The Sylvania. Well, do we want to call it Sylvania? It has to have a name to get put in the. I guess people will know what it is. Sylvania so, Development Committee. That's what, yeah, exactly that's what, what I was going to say. Good. That's exactly what it is. The Sylvania Development yeah. Committee. Yep. Sounds good to me. Yeah. And a number of nine. Sorry? And a number of nine. I'd say nine initially. Yeah. Is there a second? Well, how about say nine no more than I'll eleven? Say. That way you don't have to go back and change yep. it. Yeah. Okay. From nine to eleven. No more than eleven. Yeah. And you seconded that one? Yep. Is there any more discussion on it? Hearing none, all those in favor? I guess I just gotta go back to um, uh, what do we do with the task force? Well, I, I think the task force. They still meet. They yeah. still meet? They do? Yeah, they do. Oh. Well, okay. we're still quarterly reports that we're going to be getting that yep. they should be reviewing. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're still an active committee. Okay. 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 That's fine. 
All right. So I guess we'll get that out there and advertise that. Mm -hmm. uh, discussion of, for the committee for the Waldboro birthday for 2023. So I guess we get to create a committee for that. Bill you know, Maxwell was active. I'm not, not Bill. Bill Blanche was on the one for the 200th committee, I'm told. You'd know more about that than I would, Jan. Mm -hmm. you, you went after the county, certainly. No. I don't I, I don't remember. Okay, well, he what said there that? were 12 yeah. people on the, the 200th anniversary committee. Uh, and they divided into, they, they divvied up the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Um, and he probably would remember what they were. And he said there were two select board members on that committee, and he thought there should be on this one. This was Bill. Bill Maxwell. Bill Maxwell was. Yeah, I don't that. know if he yeah. was on the committee or not. He sure remembers a lot yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, so I guess I would suggest. Was that the fire department two hundred years? No, this was the. This town. was the town because. Mm -hmm. um, so it would have been they had a very organized. Oh, okay. Yeah. They had a very organized. The fire department did a great organization job yeah, with did. their. So I, I think we should tap into some of those yeah, people who were that. experienced and know. Yeah. But again, it's soliciting interest from people mm -hmm. who would like to be part of the effort. Sort of create the committee and then. <clears throat> so two select board members, and I would say two members of the historical historical society. I would think. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the rest we can advertise for. Yep. Does twelve sound like a good number? I mean, it's not an odd number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but are, are, are people are really going to fight about having a birthday for the town? <laughs> you never know. I guess. <laughs> Was that your motion, Bob? Yes. To create a. Waldboro Birthday Celebration 2023 Committee with 12 members. We'll put in two select board, two historical, two select board, and two uh, historical society yeah. individuals. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? She cool. will be happy. <laughs> <clears throat> Remote participation policy. Yes, <laughs> I know, I know. Policies are my thing, I'm sorry. MMA suggested this. Prior to this, there wasn't really, prior to COVID-19, we didn't have the technology that we now have. Um, and it really popped up quickly. And this is a sample policy that they're suggesting we adopt. Um, and I strongly support continuing being able to have public participation through YouTube, through Zoom. And also if one of you can't make it, you can then make it. And in the past that hasn't been allowed. Um, so I just think that this, I don't expect you to act on it tonight, but I, I think it would be a good idea to have a policy. And if you could all review it and then have your comments for me at the next or before the next meeting, if you have comments, I can have it on for. So we can put this on the agenda. For consideration, the yes. Okay. I'm sure you've read through this, Bob. I have. Is there an issue? Not that I could see. Then no. I mean, why can't we act on it tonight? Mm -hmm. Was that in the last? I I read something I from the state on this. I, I just I wondered if I read seeing, it through. Yeah, I don't recall seeing city. this per se. Um, it was on the it was on remote meetings yeah. and how they had been illegal prior mm -hmm. yep. to COVID and how yeah the, the legislature passed uh, a bill they did that's mm -hmm. what I said like I, I just mm -hmm. you know we don't have to do it, but I think we I think should it's a good idea and I this. think it's more people can participate that way yeah well we're set up look at this yeah yeah we are set up and this is for all meetings. If, if, if we're going, if, if, correct. All meetings? Yes, for committee meetings, for the select board meeting. I think the, the shellfish committee might have an issue with this. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> but what, I what? the policy correctly, it's more of the boards and committees have the option. Option. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Shellfish All right. commission doesn't want to do remote. Yeah. You just don't have to do remote. Right. Remote or recorded. I mean. Right. It can't be by text only. It can't be email. Yep. Yep. 
Yep, that's fine. Or chat functions, you know. That was the only issue I had with it. Yeah. Yeah, it just, if you do it, it governs how you're supposed to do it. Yep. Right. Okay. If you do it. Yep. I would just double check. You just sure. want to make sure that if, if you're doing it, people have the ability mm -hmm. to participate. Yep. Yep. Well, I guess we really don't. That was the only issue I had with it, is yeah. forcing committees to have. If you'd like, I can circulate it to all the committees, too, prior to the next meeting. For their no, as long as, 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 already aware of this. Oh, okay. as long as, as long as, as long as, uh, I mean, we're, we've been doing it. Well aware. So. We've right. been doing it. I get that. We've been doing it since yep. March of 2020. Yep. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in this policy that we haven't been doing. I don't think so either. Pretty much. If you're comfortable, you can do it tonight. I just yeah, I mean, to that's sure. what I was going to do. Is yeah, no sense suitably of suitably amended to, I mean, this is an MMA policy, just suitably amended to refer to the town. Yep. So I'd make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? You all set there? Mm -hmm. Animal control service contract. This is our yearly contract with yep. Lincoln County for ACO services. I know last year we talked about, and also during budget, <laughs> is this something that the police department could do? The, I, no, was the answer. I got that. <laughs> no. We did, though, after that discussion, get, um, and I think it was after a select board meeting, you helped wrangle a raccoon. A rabid raccoon. It was before a meeting. Before a meeting. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was right out there. You can add that to your list of accomplishments. Yeah. Raccoon wrangler, him and um, Officer Bartunic. But we we did get one of those sticks with the loop, and um, we have the kennel and everything. So um, if it's a friendly, I mean, we do bring just so everybody's aware. If it's a friendly dog, we do bring it in, you know, um, and try before we send it anywhere. Um, but just so you're aware, the ACO is the one who handles when we have loose bulls, <laughs> loose horses, other loose animals. It's not just dogs and cats. And we have had a loose bull in the time I've been here. You need a motion for that? Yes. Okay. Would somebody like to make song. a motion to continue can the I, contract? Can I just ask some questions about this? Sure. Just a second. Sure. You. Okay. They, they wrote this letter to us on July 1st. <coughs> they, dated July 1st. Yes. Under our contract with them, they're supposed to give us 60 days notice. Yes. They've given us 30. Yes. First point. Second point. <laughs> um, <laughs> How much did we spend? How much did we spend last fiscal year? I know we budgeted six thousand dollars. No more than that. Now we budgeted seven thousand for the coming fiscal year, but for well, last year. Well, because you have to realize when you look under just that. Lincoln, just Lincoln County. When you look under that, that also is the Humane Society's also in that line. Right. Item. There's ten thousand dollars on their line item. You're right, Adam. Right. It's, it's like seventeen. Six thousand. No. There was six thousand for Lincoln County. Yeah. I can tell you that. I just have to and look. We approved seven thousand for them in fiscal year twenty twenty two. Unless Hold we on. changed it from the budget. Hold I think on. it's the same. I thought it was seventeen five, but or sixteen five. But that was the total 17. for ACO budget line. Seventeen total. But there was a is note it, is in that the budget was? document about them changing the way they charge us. And that obviously hasn't happened. No, so because you do the sixteen bucks an hour. All, plus. all the towns said no. Oh, okay, that's why that is. All yes, right. but I can tell you what we spent. Hold on. It was pretty there. close to our budget. We spent five thousand three hundred fifty dollars and seventy-five cents. So we're well under budget. So for this year so far. Or well, for, for last year. Oh, really? Yeah. They're supposed to have an advisory committee, according to their contract, that is composed of different people from different towns. Yes. Right? Have we ever attended one of their advisory committee meetings? Uh, Chief Lash does. He does? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the job descriptions that they... Are not ours. Those are county job All right, descriptions. They're, not, they're supposed to be part of the contract, and they're not. 
and I, I'm not going to get hung up on that. I imagine they're probably fairly standard, but they do refer specifically in the contract to the attached job descriptions. Um, that could be a Julie issue, just thinking that that's fair. Oh, I see. Well. Yeah. Saving, I, I think that was a Julie issue, just saving paper. paper. Would somebody like to make a motion to accept the animal control officer contract? So moved. Second. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Cool. Old business, there is none. Agenda items for the next meeting. I'd like to go over. Um, the paperwork that I gave you on um, our, not our goals, but our, I guess it was our goals. The color coded. The list. color code, yes. not the color, well, the color coded list and also the chart, the chart of yeah. whether to get our, what did I call it? I can't remember. Process. Our process yeah. of how to go about with having some public meetings on different projects okay. and the matrix. The matrix that I had given you for comment, I have gotten received comments from one select board member. So I'll put that on for the next agenda. Mm -hmm. I also um, should ask you too, um, I had a meeting with Maine Health today with Cindy Wade, their new CEO. And typically Jim Donovan would come in September and give a PowerPoint presentation and overview. Um, would you like her to come? I thought you would. Um, I told her the PowerPoint presentations with numbers. I, I She's a bit different than Jim in that she'd like to have a conversation mm -hmm. and not so much a, a presentation. Um, so I thought we could invite her for the first meeting in September, if that would be okay with you. Can, can we ask Karen Ann to be here for that too? At, at the she, same meeting? At the, I think she'd have some input that might be... Maybe not. Maybe I'm off on left field on this one. Maybe I should even suggest that. Our, our community navigator. I don't think she really has it's a different. Do. It's yeah. a different organization, although they work closely together. Yeah. It's different. Okay. But I mean, okay. if you would like to have Karen Ann any, in any time, I mean, I think that an August meeting for Karen Ann would be excellent because I do think that some of what we're seeing and starting to see um, should be out there. That conversation um, we had the other day was so I'll give you just a really quick I, I don't want really I don't want to go on too long but we are starting to see in our community navigator program some scary things um, and, and I will tell you the community navigator program has done so much for the town of Waldeboro in its short time being in existence and lives are changed by having a community navigator here. And I, I, I would venture as far to say lives have been saved. But there is a, a disturbing trend of homelessness that we seem to be facing. And it's not homelessness as in, you know, somebody isn't, um, they're, they're living on the street. Um, it's, we had somebody in the other day, uh, uh, husband and wife, two kids, you know, they, they both have jobs. They were living in a house paying rent and that house got sold by the owner and they literally cannot find a rental to go into. Technically they're homeless come September 1st and they literally cannot find a place to rent. So that's, not the first time and it's not going to be the last time because as people are selling that typically rented, <clears throat> it's hard. Um, and that's one of our fears with even, it, it goes into even us trying to lure people to come be police officers. Um, where are they going to live? Um, you know, and, and we're hearing this more and more. People are, rentals are hard to find houses are difficult to buy um so housing is going to become a huge issue in the very near future so i think a conversation maybe either at the next meeting or the following meeting with karen ann might be useful so 
So Maine Health will be here when you can In September, meeting. and Karen Ann will come in August. Okay. My only other question is, typically we skipped a meeting in August. Do, does anybody have a desire to do just one meeting in August? I don't think we really have a whole lot going on, do we? I mean, we have a whole lot going on, but... Well, I mean, as far as... It's up to you. I, I, I just wanted to bring it up because stuff I... Stuff that needs action on. It's up to you guys. Well, we have Maine's EOT on the docket as well. I mean, what if they can visit us? I think... Well, let's do our first one. I'll try to get Maine here. Um, I will try to get the DOT here at our first meeting in August. If not... I'll ask them about the second meeting. I don't know what their schedule is for when they can come down, but I want them definitely to have something to say when we have them here. I'd like them to have a solution. Okay. Whatever. I think that's a, probably the biggest thing hanging on us right now is when they can show up. I will make that happen. Mm -hmm. So either the first meeting or the second meeting. And if all of you uh, could just write your phone number next to where the sign-in sheet was, that way I have it, and I can contact you. And even if, while they're coming down to do their assessment, if I can get you guys out there maybe even with them, that might be a good thing. Or meet here and have a chat with them. So, okay. No, I mean, have you received this? Tanya handles those. Have you not received no. any? No, but I mean, I was just asking Bob if he'd received any, like for planning. No, we do have, because, we have openings you know, you on our, notify yeah. when one is in the mail. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's what I meant. Yeah. No, yeah. Will and I are supposed to be yeah. doing that. Right. We haven't gotten anything. Yeah, no. we have um, openings on all of, basically almost all of our boards, but planning board really does need board members, if anybody is interested. I put it out on Facebook. I've beat down doors, <laughs> made suggestions. So. Okay. Is there anything else? I so. Somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second.